Hello and welcome to the Jumpstart Podcast with Jeff Lydix. I'm your host, Jeff Sauer. Today, for our 65th episode, I'm going to share with you the top 10 things that inspired me after spending a weekend in Lisbon with 30 other entrepreneurs. Now, let's start with some context. I'm part of a private forum for serious entrepreneurs called the DC, which was started by the guys behind the Tropical MBA podcast. It's a great podcast if you're interested in learning more about business in general. Now, I've been listening to the podcast for the last five years or so, ever since my friend Nate Ginsberg introduced it to me. And for the first two years of listening to the podcast, they would always mention this thing that they called the DC and I didn't really know what it meant. And I was always like, are they talking about Washington, D.C.? What's going on? Eventually, it piqued my interest enough that I asked Nate about it. And he said, this is a community for entrepreneurs. It's a private forum that you can use. And he sung the praises of it. He said he learned a lot about his business by being part of the D.C. And so this private forum, I joined it. It has some requirements before you can even join. And there's no guarantee that you'll get accepted. So I probably pondered it over for a while before I even applied. But once you're in, it's totally worth it. You get access to meetups, you can vet your business ideas, and you can do so much more. I mean, the return on investment for this community has been tremendous for me, just from the hallway conversations I've had and from the people I've met and the contacts I've made. It's been really tremendous for me, actually. Anyway, so I saw a post earlier this year about a DC event in Lisbon. And knowing that my travel plans had me being in Lisbon during that time, I said, okay, I'm 90% in. And I didn't really think much of it. Now, fast forward six months later, and I made it official that I'd be attending. And I even volunteered to give a talk at the event. Basically, it, the event was half day of talks, half day of masterminds. And anybody could have a talk as long as they were one of the first ones to apply. And so I ended up giving the last talk on the second day because I was the last one to apply. But this was a super informal event. Uh, basically, we knew who was speaking. We knew rough times, but all the participants, they came in there from all walks of life. They happened to be DC members. That was the the, num the only requirement. And they cut off the enrollment at 30. I think there's probably about 60 people who wanted to go, but 30 was the limit they had. And so it was cool because there's all kinds of different business interests, all kinds of interesting folks. You know, I had one perception going in that everybody would be doing marketing or SEO or, or online courses, but that was a very small fraction of the people there. And, and that's probably the best part is I got exposure to people of different walks of life, different passions, and I walked away with a ton of ideas for how I can run a better business, but not just a business, how I can lead a better lifestyle. And it also gave me motivation to get started with what I wanted to do. So how the heck does that happen in just one weekend? Well, let's, let's get into it. That's what this podcast is about. So here are 10 breakthroughs that I had after spending a weekend with entrepreneurs. Number one is you can be successful and still choose your health over your business. Now, let me, let me set the tone here. I have not been healthy over the last two years. Not, I'm not at the best weight I've been at. I'm, I'm not eating healthy. And basically, I have not been the healthiest that I've been. I look at pictures of myself, don't look great. I'm, I'm not very proud of where it's been, but a lot of it, I make the excuse that I'm making this business better. So everything goes to making this business better. And it was a good reality check to be with these other people because all these people, they'd get up and they'd, they'd do yoga before they came to these conferences, something I probably wouldn't normally do. And they're eating better than me. I'm, I'm eating like something with chips and a sandwich, like a steak sandwich with chips and everybody else is eating a, a salmon salad. And I'm like looking at myself, I'm like, man, I look at these people. They're all more fit than me. They're all eating better. They're, they're talking about how they meditated in the morning, you know, some stuff you may or may not believe in, but the fact is these people look like they're, they're in much better health than, than I felt like I'm in, in the last few years. And so it was really cool to be around them because then it encouraged me. And actually ever since I've been back in Porto, it's been a, it's been all eating healthy and, and basically adopting more of like a pescatarian type lifestyle versus eating meat every, every meal every day. And so I've, I've actually already started to drop some weight because of that and because of the focus. But before the, before the entrepreneur weekend, my focus was basically like computer, computer, computer. And then it'd be like late morning. I'd be like, Oh crap, I'm hungry. I better eat something. And then I better eat more. And Oh, I can't work out cause I have a full stomach. So that's not going to work out. And then I'd be at the computer again for another couple hours, computer, computer, computer. Oh shit. I forgot to work out. 
computer again. Oh man, I'm stressed out. I need to get a glass of wine to unwind. And that was, that's sort of what it's been like many days in this, in this process because there's just so much to do. And then I see these other people and, and this might be a facade. This is, I always have to be skeptical of what people are doing, but I see other people who are, you know, who, whose businesses are running without them there that weekend. They don't need to check their phone all the time. They don't need to be stressed out. And so either they're, they've discovered something that I haven't, or they're just lying. <laughs> and either way, right? Either way, it doesn't really matter to me what they are. I've found that I want to be like that. I want to be fit and healthy and I want to not have the stress that goes onto the business. And so it's an attitude thing. Even if these people are all lying and they're fooling themselves, I'm still better off doing it than not doing it. And so that was one of my breakthroughs is that you can do both. And I've already started to put that in place and implement it. And it's not just when I say both, I mean, both being in your business and being healthy, I'm actually making some positive changes to the business as well. And I'll get into those in a couple of the later notes. Number two, surround yourself with positive people. Now, it's not that I don't have positive people in my life. I actually do. My wife and I, we have a great relationship, positive. We spend a lot of time together. But this is a more concentrated dose. So instead of being with my wife in, in our Airbnb like I am like 90% of the year, this is a concentrated dose of 30 entrepreneurs who have different walks of life and different experiences. So I got introduced to a ton of ideas, a ton of lifestyles, a ton of things that, that I don't normally get. And so I basically got a ton of input in a very short amount of time. And that was, that was nice. And so it's always good to be around people who are positive or people who are motivated, people who are passionate. Any one of those words can, can sum up what it's like to be around other entrepreneurs. But a lot of good things come from being around positive people, people who can help make you better and, and just, you know, seeing how they live things. And, and this has always been a, a trend throughout my life. There's certain people that when I spend time with them, I, I become a better person immediately. And then there's other times where there's people you're around and you're like, man, they just sort of satisfy all of your impulses. And you actually need both of those in your life. But I think that being around the ones that are driven and motivated is probably the best long term place to be. Number three, I need to build a better business or continue to build a better business and I need to stop being a hero. And this one's hard and I'm not sure if I have an actual plan for implementing it or if I'm going to necessarily be able to do this at that level, but it's a great reminder. And again, sometimes you can take these things with a grain of salt, but, but it's like it helps you understand if you want something or not. So I was reading a post on the DC forum or some Facebook community related to this conference that I was at. And this person said they have a, that they finally hit seven figures for their web hosting business. And they decided to take a month and to travel throughout Southeast Asia or, or the South Pacific or something like that. And the only reason why they were able to do it is because they hired somebody to manage the business. They built a team. They put process in place that he could leave a business web hosting, which I wouldn't picture the CEO could ever leave <laughs> in a web hosting business. He was able to leave for a month and not have any stress. And also he had a highly profitable business and is doing well. And it's like, okay, well, what steps does somebody need to do to get to that part? First of all, they need to hire well. They need to have process in place. All these things that I just talked about is what a business needs to do. Now, this is easier said than done because the instinct that I have as Jeff, the guy behind Jeff Jeffalytics, the guy who has his name on everything, the guy who runs this podcast, the instinct I have is that I know how to do all these things, so I just want to build it, right? I just want to, I'll build a website, I'll, I'll do something, I'll do this or that. And so it was really a nice, refreshing piece to see that other people can build a business where it's not centered on them. And actually, that's, that's really important because that makes the business more sellable in the end. It, it makes the business happier in general as if it's not one person sort of being the, the dictator in, in things. It's, it's, it's more distributed than that. Now... On the counterpoint, you can't, no business would ever start if it didn't have somebody taking on the ultimate responsibility of starting a business. And so it's, it's sort of a funny shift that you need to do in mindset is that you need to be able to do everything in order to get the business to survive. And then once it hits a certain point, you need to basically undo that. You need to like decouple yourself from the business. And so you have to have the ego to get started. And then you have to have the humility to take yourself out of it. And that's not always easy to do. It's not instinctual at all because the things that made you start that business, the thing that made the business successful ends up being what cripples your business in the end. And so 
I know this. I've written articles on it. I've seen other people do this exact same thing where they can't divest themselves from the business. They can't get a team in place. And yet the number one instinct for any business owner, at least I can imagine, is to is to do that because they don't necessarily trust others or that's all they know. And so this weekend was a good reminder to me that I, I need to build a better business and stop trying to be a hero. And I need to always be conscious about that. That doesn't mean that there's not room for you in the business. It just means that you need to account for it. And that actually leads me to number four. Take yourself out of the equation and what do you have? This is from a business perspective. Take me out of the equation. What do we have? Well, I'm, I'm more confident now than I was a year ago that if I took myself out, there'd be something there. I also think, you know, from a lifestyle business perspective, I wonder about the other part too, is like, why build a team if, if I have a good lifestyle? And so I'm sort of in this in-between piece right now where it's more stressful now to build out a team than it was to just do it on my own, but it's a different type of stress and it's a different type of opportunity. But I'm also trying to create a bigger revenue opportunity for the business and also trying to make it so that the business can survive without me because that makes it attractive to purchasers. It makes it attractive to investors. It makes it a much healthier overall situation. And so it's a weird transition. I didn't, I didn't actually think I'd have to get to this point. I thought I'd just stay in the first phase where it's just me just blogging about stuff, but the choices I've made and my ambitions have, have taken it further than that. So it's sort of funny. Now I'm worrying about things that I actually never set out to do. Now let's, I'll say it on here. This is the last business that I'm going to start. I'll never start a business from scratch again. If I do anything in business, it's going to be purely from an investment standpoint or from a taking over an existing business and, and applying my skills to it. You have it here. If, if you ever see me trying to start a new business, let's talk. Awesome. Number five, there are a million ways to be successful. Never forget that. There's like not one path. Like I, I go on one path because it's all that I know. And so this even ties into number one, this ties into number two, but basically there's so many different ways you can be successful. So why, why think of one and also why try to force one because that's all that, you know, wouldn't you want to get experience or exposure to other ones, like seeing other successful people, seeing how they went about their lives. It gives you inspiration to do it. And, and I'm not saying that I would just change what I'm doing right now entirely in order to satisfy what I heard somebody else say. That's insane. That's insanity to, to do that, to forfeit all the good things just because one person made it sound better because they're, they're basically summarizing the last five to 10 years of their life being an entrepreneur more than that into like the good parts they have five to 10 years into it. And, and actually I think I'm at my business is the point where I can start to do that as well. Talk about the good things. And I do that as well, but, but, uh, you can't put too much faith in that, but you can learn from it and you can draw from it and you can compare and you can use that as a way to expand. And so your own personal growth can come from learning from others versus always doing the same things the way that you find instinctual. So there's a million ways to be successful and you can look at that two different ways. One is you can think, okay, well, if there's a million of them, what if I choose the wrong one? You can get crippled by fear. The other one is, oh, wow. Well, so that means that if I incorporate several of these other ways that people have become successful, or if I learn from them, then I can sort of fend off the opportunities for failure. So you can look at it as an empowering thing, which is what I do, or you can look at it as a point of failure that you chose the wrong one. Here's the deal. You never choose the wrong business model. You have to adapt your business model to the situation around you. And so if anybody's worried about, oh, there's a million things, I'm going to choose the wrong one, then they just haven't done it long enough because there is no such thing as choosing the wrong one. We make mistakes all the time. Like 90% of the things that I try don't work out at all. But that 10% that does work, it's amazing and it's lucrative and it makes everything else worthwhile. And so that's the thing that we need to realize is that there are a million ways to be successful. Number six, I'm going to write that book. So I sat in a session and this guy, actually two sessions about self-publishing on Amazon and it was pretty fascinating. One guy, both of them have made, you know, thirty-five dollars to $50,000 writing books and selling them on Amazon. And they sort of talked about how they did it. They, they answered my questions about actually physically printing the book. There's all kinds of different interesting things they said. But one thing that I took away was this guy named Derek. And he said, basically, just take your last three months of blog posts, package it up and call it a book. 
and make that your first book. Don't spend time writing the great American novel, the best book ever, because nobody's going to read it anyway. Get one under your belt, get practice, get good at it. Don't make your first book your best book. Just write something. Just play around with it. Just practice it. And so that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm going to take it on as a, as a project to to work on that piece with these posts that I've been writing for my Sage blog. And so that's what I think I'm going to turn into a book and see how that goes. So I'm going to write that book. I'm not. I actually have to give myself a deadline. I'm not prepared to do it on this podcast, but I'm going to give myself a deadline and I'm going to write a book. It'll be out in 2018. Let's just put it that way. That's my deadline, 2018. If, if I'm still talking about it, then you just delete this podcast. If I'm still talking about it in 2019 about how I'm going to write the book, delete the podcast. You have my permission, and frankly, I have no more credibility at that point if I don't do it. And that leads me to number seven, keep on setting goals. So I just set a goal right there on the podcast. Goal setting is really interesting in many parts of life, and, and I've probably talked about it here Obviously, I'm known as the analytics guy, so I talk about goals from that perspective. But one thing that's really interesting to me in, from a goal perspective is that a lot of times I'll set a goal, and then once I achieve it, I don't know what to do. So for example, weight loss or, or health or physical goals. I achieved the goals. I've, I've achieved my goals many times. And then once I hit it, I just go back to my old lifestyle. So how do you change it? Do you keep on raising the bar with your goal? which is what I mentioned with business. I keep on raising the bar and that's, that's how I'm making these decisions. Cause I hit a certain threshold and okay, now I have to set new goals. That was basically what I talked about in points number three and four. And then from a weight loss perspective, I hit it and then you just go back to your lifestyle. Then you have to keep on setting a better goal. So I've set some goals. I'm not going to tell you them on the, on the air here, but I'm, I keep on setting goals in order to get better at stuff. Cause I need something to drive to cause I'm my human nature. My, my regression is to the mean and the means not always a good place to be. And so from a business, from a health, all kinds of different standpoints, I keep on setting goals and I'm doing that myself. And it's been pretty fun to see it, to see it go. Number eight, seek out passion in others. In other words, surround yourself with passionate people. Hopefully part of the reason why you like this podcast is because I'm passionate about all kinds of interesting things, and I like to interview people who are passionate as well. That's the whole point. That's why I do this, because I like to seek out the passion in others. I like to interview people, understand what makes them tick, and then see how I can apply it to what I'm doing. And hopefully that's that's why you listen to the podcast, is so you can keep on making improvements or, or, or good ideas, right? You don't have to incorporate them all. There's a million ways to be successful, but you can at least learn from the few that have worked for other people. So seek it out because there's an effect that happens when you're around passionate people. And that is that it makes you passionate yourself. So this is going to lead into number nine, but I was around this guy named Michael and Michael has basically decided full time. His life is going to be investing and studying cryptocurrencies, bitcoins, ethereum, all that good stuff. And I sat in a mastermind with him. I spent about 6 hours or so this this weekend talking about cryptocurrencies with Michael and other people. And that's number 9. Cryptocurrency is fascinating. It's an interesting view of the world and I'm forming a thesis as we speak. I don't have one necessarily, but I know that it's it's fascinating. <laughs> that's there's no doubt. You know, I spent the 6 hours talking about it and then in the last 2 weeks I've just been pouring myself into it, reading every source I can get, subscribing to blogs, learning how to store things securely, learning all the things about it, what an ICO is, learning all these different things, and ICO means initial coin offering, by the way, learning about prognosis, learning about how governments are accepting cryptocurrency, how they're banning them, where people see it going, the technology itself, like what's the technology behind it. I'm learning a lot and I've been pouring myself into it because I think this is a crazy, interesting future that it's going to create. And funny thing is I've known about this stuff for like four or five years, but it just happened to be being around passionate people and seeing how excited they got that made me excited about it. And so that's where I mean, seek the passion of others because you don't have to be the first one to come up with every idea. You don't have to be the first one to decide, oh yeah, this is something, you know, this is the future. In fact, very few people are going to be the ones that say this is the future, but it doesn't mean that we can't benefit from the future. It doesn't mean that we can't have an opinion on it, or as I said, a thesis. You just have to be around it. 
if you're not around it, then you'll never know. And so this is sort of how I've always progressed my knowledge in my career is that I just get around it. I wanted to learn photography. I got around it. I wanted to learn travel hacking. I, I started a blog and I started commenting. I mean, all the things that I've learned, I'm never the first one to produce something, but the results are pretty great. It's pretty amazing once you get to that point. And so seek out the passion in others. In episode 67, I'm going to be talking about some of my passions, some of the things that I'm doing on the side outside of business. Be on the lookout for that one. I think you're really going to enjoy it. And then number 10, and this sort of correlates to it, is position your life to be able to invest in the future. Now, this is a loaded point because it can mean many things. Invest in the future. It can be money investments. It can be time investments. It can be anything, right? Now, when I wrote this down, I think I meant position my personal life so that I can take advantage of investing in the world and the technology of the future. So for example, cryptos, or for example, other businesses, for example, disruptive technology. How do I position my life and, and my finances and everything so that when the future comes along, I can make a bet on it? Because frankly, there's a lot of wealth to be generated from choosing the right horse. Now, the problem is, how do you know if you're going to choose the right horse? You don't. It's gambling unless you're educated. It's still gambling on the future, but it's 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 at least an educated guess, right? So basically the reason why I'm pouring myself into things like cryptocurrency and other areas is because I'm bullish on the future, but I am not going to be a huge investor in these things if I can't learn about it. And so what I mean by positioning my life to be able to do this is that maybe don't be so busy all the time. Maybe don't commit to 50 hours of work in a week and leave no time for reading, leave no time for learning. That's not a good idea. I don't recommend at all spending all of your available time on the one thing that you're doing in order to make money. Just, you know, basically grinding it out so you can pay your mortgage, that type of stuff. And and trust me, you probably listen to this and be like, this guy is over assuming things or he's a jerk to say that. I don't mean it. I'm not judging anybody in anything they do. What I'm saying is, I'm personally trying to make it a point that in the future I can make these investments. So I'm not saying I'm doing a great job at it, but frankly, having 10 hours a week extra and the energy to spend those 10 hours to read about something like the currency of the future <laughs> and to form a thesis on it is a pretty, it's, it's time well spent. Because at least you understand it. You can do it about anything. It can be hobbies. It can be, it can be business stuff. It can be techniques, anything. And my, my thing has always been, to spend, basically to spend a year getting better at something. I actually sat in it on a talk at the DCX Lisbon conference by this guy named Tal. Tal is the one who organized it. He organized the whole conference and he keynoted this other conference in Lisbon a week later called the DNX. So I went to DCX. There's another one called DNX. Don't try to don't try to understand these acronyms. That one's the Digital Nomad Conference. Anyways, Tall did a thing about how for the last 10, it was called 10 years and 100 goals. Basically, for the last 10 years, he set 100 goals for himself, and he's achieved them. Or at least he says that he did. And so, like, one year was the year of health, where, or the year of fitness, where he did an Ironman triathlon. Another one was the year of socializing, where he just socialized every night for a, for a year, or every weekend night, it was something like that. And so this guy went through this whole experience and talked about it. And so it was cool to see how, how he did that. And he also, you know, basically money is a way to support that versus the other way around. And so I thought it was a really cool talk, really interesting. I'm not sure if it will be published anywhere, but it was really good to see that and, and thinking about positioning my life to invest in my future or the future, whatever it ends up being. The other thing is, and if, and if you can't get healthy, if you can't do everything else right, then then does it matter? And so I've had a lot of thoughts over the last, you know, since the last time I did a Jeff episode, this conference came and went, and it was pretty amazing. Like, I think this the last one went live as I was on the way to the conference, and this is now basically a week and a half after the conference has been done. And so a lot of cool stuff going on, and I would encourage you, if you have the opportunity to go and get around other people who are passionate and, and be spending time with them and get into a situation where you have their undivided attention, where you're not just sitting on the phone or, or, you know, 
trying to tweet out everything that's going on, be in the present, turn your phone off and just hear what people have to say. I try to do it more often, but it's hard when you're traveling. The cool thing about this DC is that it's all location independent people. And so find it in your local community, find it in an online community like the DC, but just try to find it. And if you're not interested in this stuff, if you're not running a business, then you've probably already checked out a little bit by now. But if you hope to run one someday, or if you're interested, I do think that it is good to be around passion. And hopefully this podcast is at least some sign of the passion because I'm, I'm passionate about a lot of things. And the reason why I do the interviews and the reason why I do the Jeff episodes now, now that we're, you know, 20 Jeff episodes into it or so is that I want to learn from passionate people. I wouldn't say teaching you, but I want to talk about the things that I'm doing. And this is therapeutic for me. Hopefully it is for you too. Anyways, that's the end of our 10 points. And so it's funny when I, when it came time for me to hop on the train to Lisbon from Porto on that Friday afternoon, I was dreading the experience. There were airplanes flying over our head because it was the Red Bull air race. And it was really cool. These, these airplanes were like doing flips and just going through the river and all kinds of awesome stuff. I took a video of it before we left. But then I got, you know, I was dreading going down to this thing. I was like, do I have to really talk to people? I'm an introvert. I don't like talking to people. And I could have just sat there and watched airplanes all weekend, which would have been pretty cool in itself. But then I started talking with people and I started hearing their stories and making friends with them. And it turned out that it was an awesome weekend. And now I look forward to seeking out these conversations quarterly. I'd love to go to meetups every quarter and just get something off of my chest and just get new ideas and talk and learn from people. So we're going to see how that goes with the travel and everything. But with this DC community, there's a chance I could make that happen. Now I've been thinking a lot lately about my life outside of work. And for the next episode, I've already hinted at it twice. Now I'm going to talk about some of my non-work interests, hobbies, passions, and more. So be on the lookout for that in episode 67. And that's all for this week. Next week, we have a really exciting talk with the technical genius behind the Third Door Media websites. Now, send me a tweet if you want to guess who I'm going to be interviewing. And if you wanted to learn more about the DC or anything else I've discussed, you know where to find me. For show notes, visit jefflytics.com slash Lisbon.